Hi everybody, if you can hear me, um, please let me know, put up one. Can you hear me? Because I can't hear you guys at all, wait a minute. If you can hear me, please press one. Can y'all hear me? Can you hear me? Please press one. All right. All right. Welcome back to Marcella Speaks, you guys. I'm starting a little bit early tonight because I just want to say something. I want to say thank you for all the people who reached out to me. It was awesome. I read your stories. I sent some of you back. Thanks. Um, I didn't get a chance to read all of them um, because I've been on a mission, but um, Thank you. I'm going to get a chance to read everybody's because um, I don't think I will be on tomorrow. I will probably be on Wednesday night. Um, well, Wednesday night, I'm going to be visiting um, someone else's page um, and um, with a group of girls. And I will make sure y'all get the message out um, once she gives me the total um, title of it being tomorrow. I want to talk about the trolls right quick. The trolls, you can't stop this message. You cannot make this message into a mess. So don't even try that. I want everybody to respect one another. If someone says something negative, let them say it. Let them say it because it took me a lot and a lot of years to come out to the public with my story and so i just don't want anybody to block this blessing for um so many people because i did know that i wasn't going through this alone i'm sure the people in our generation have been going through this so it is something that people need to hear um my message tonight is um a victim to victorious um, I want y'all to know I'm still in therapy. That will not stop. Um, I have to keep going through therapy uh, and, and it probably be the rest of my life. But I make sure that as I am growing older, I do change therapists. Um, when I feel like I have outlived a therapist, then I will go and get another therapist that can handle my load. Um, I also want y'all to know that because um, y'all have been so gr um, gracious to me, I want to call y'all my gems, G-E-M-S. Y'all are the gems of Marcella Speaks um, because if you have survived any type of um, violence, um, whether it was childhood trauma or domestic violence, um, you are a gem and I don't want y'all to, you know, ever think that y'all are less than and y'all are equivalent to me. So um, let me see if I left any more messages out. Um, this is going to be part two. Uh, as you recall, on Saturday, I shared with you um, turning my mess into a message. And today it is going to be victim to um, victorious and I have cut it down. So I want to remind you of just a little bit from the last, the mess to message. Um, like I said, I had not cried about my trauma since I was very young and um, I, I've cried over this pandemic, losing family members. I have cried when I lost Kyle, who felt like a family member to me. Um, and also that my mother had kicked my baby out of my stomach at the age of 16. And so then I, I moved back home to New York. So once I got, I was um, 18 and 19, you know, around that time, 18 and 19, I started dating a rapper and his name was Melly Mel. Um, I don't know if y'all remember him. Um, we didn't get into a sexual relationship because um, 
after my first boyfriend, I, I wanted to take some time and learn myself and not just jump back into dating. I had got a job at Wendy's on 161st Street in the Bronx, um, right next to Yankee Stadium. Um, and he came in there one day and he told me I was pretty and now, you know, he had the chains and stuff on him, leather in the summertime and stuff like that. And so we went to this club um, called um, Disco Fever. Um, you know, it was like three days. And he said, well, meet me at this club, Disco Fever. I went to that club to meet him. When I got there, he had already told the people, this girl named Marcella is going to be looking for me. Just let her in. They bring me up to the VIP section while we sit in there talking and drinking. I was drinking like a little Moet spliff. That was the first time I had had Moet. Um, it was this woman who came in the VIP section, y'all. And when I say that she looked like she could have been my sister, um, she looked just like me and it really had taken me aback. So in my mind, I knew that he had a type. And so uh, he got up from the table and um, he beat her up. And while he was fighting her and shoving her out of the VIP section, cause it was a back room. Um, I got up and left because, okay, I just came from trauma in Virginia with my mom. And so I didn't, I knew that if he was beating on her, my mind just clicked and said, oh my God, one day that would be me. So I left him alone, never to talk to him again. Didn't go back to the club for months because I didn't want him looking for me. Um, when he came to my job and I just saw his car pull up, I would go to the back and I would let everybody know he was stalking me. So don't let him know I was there. Um, and so eventually he stopped coming. But one day I was going to the number four train um, from my apartment building and it was this tall guy um, that was following me and he seemed such like a gentleman. And we would talk, walk into the train every day. and. Um, we started dating and now man number two it turns into a sexual relationship. I got pregnant. Um, I got pregnant and um, he was just a, a good guy, but I was still working at Wendy's during my pregnancy because I was living with my aunt and I always felt like I didn't want to put a burden on her, to her. And um, he started cheating on me. And that was like, oh my God, that was to me, that was like, oh my, and then I would tell him, I thought you was with me, I'm carrying your baby. He was like, look, you ain't the only one that's having a baby by me right now. I mean, he just turned into a monster right before my eyes. It sent me into a major depression of rejection. Like my mom rejected me. I thought my mom would love me. She didn't love me. Um, I thought he would love me because I was carrying his baby. December 15th, 1982, I had a daughter. Her name was Dominique. Um, and she was born with, um, I, I wouldn't say Down syndrome, but it was chromosomes. She didn't have the Y and the Z chromosome that she should have. And so she didn't make it. And so um, I stayed there in the hospital, they allowed me to stay with my dead child um, in my room in an incubator with the child wasn't breathing, but they just let me stay there until I was comfortable enough to say, you know, take the baby away, I'm gonna go home. And that sent me into a major, major depression. And um, I just resented this guy because he wasn't with me any longer. And, um, you know, that was another form of abuse to me. It was rejection. You know, after I lost the baby, he felt like I lost the baby because of something was wrong with me, which he was an older man. So, you know, we never, it never boiled down to what was wrong with who. And so what I did was from the kindness of my heart, the doctors were talking to me while I was in the hospital to let me know that they wanted to, um, 
run tests on the baby while the baby was passed away and to find out why this happened and to let me know if I was ever going to have a baby like this again. And so that was my first offering up to help other people was to allow them to take my baby, dissect my baby. Um, they broke it down for me. I still got that letter today in my home right now um, since 1982. I keep it. I go over it. Um, so after that, it's just I was scared to date for a very, very long time. So then, you know, I had a girlfriend that went to school with me here from New Jersey. Um, she told me she was going down in Virginia and I told her, hey, that's I know that I know that area. So I'm going to run down there with you. She was dating a military or army guy. Now, remember, I'm familiar with the military because my mom dated military men and everything. So I ended up um, going down with her and it was Black College Week here in Virginia Beach. And I met my third man. And we only dated like four months. And my girlfriend, her Navy, her army guy asked her to marry her. And my army guy asked me to marry him. And I knew good and well, I didn't love him. I didn't love him at all. I mean, I, it was nice that he was taking me out doing stuff. And, you know, they both had put in to go to Panama. And so I went over to Panama and that was the first time we was into relations after we got married. Cause I said, I'm gonna, I wanna try to do it another way. I wanna try to do it right, um, have sex after I'm married. And well, when I went over there, um, I had a, I had, I had, gotten pregnant and I did not want to have my baby in a foreign country. So I came back to Virginia Beach. I had my daughter because the army base is here. I had my daughter. And like I said, that was the first time I legitimately in my life felt love that I, I, I would protect this baby. I was so scared. I didn't want nobody to touch her. I didn't want nobody to hurt my baby, you know, and I would say just, I love you all the time. I love you all the time. So after um, my daughter was um, nine months, they allowed us to go back to Panama. And when I went back to met Panama, my husband had met a woman and moved her into our home. And um, I surprised him and took him. I mean, I surprised him and flew back on a day I didn't tell him, you know, I, I speak Spanish. Um, so I was able to have them take me from the airport to our home that I knew I had a key, but because I had the child in Virginia and I was gone for nine months, he had picked up. And when I got to the door and opened it, um, the lady wanted to know on, um, you know, who like who am I? And I was saying, you know, yo esposa, meaning his wife. And she said, no, 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 yo, me, me esposa. And so, you know, I just waited next door in someone's house that I didn't even know. One military family had moved out, and it was another lady had moved in. I waited till he got off work. And I could hear him close the door next door. So I took my key again and went in. And because I had a baby, I I stayed in the situation. I, he kicked this girl out. I'm laying in the bed where she's laid. Um, and I just said, I can't be a failure. I have to try to stick in this relationship because of my child. And... Um, once my child turned two, I mean, things had gotten better between us. I had to forgive him. What was I going to do? Come back with a newborn baby. Um, I'm 22 years old at this point. Where was I going to go? I couldn't go back to my mother's house. I uh, didn't want to go to my aunt's house and take my baby. So I stayed with this dude. I stayed with him and I ended up getting pregnant again. And I had my second child in Panama. And so I, I never connected with him. I never loved him, but he did give me a child. I was able to spend money at leisure. 
um, I stayed with him. And then when I, we had our second child, um, we came back to the States and he was stationed in Texas. So again, I wanted to go home, show my mother, her grandchildren. And um, my, my daughter was running down the hallway in my mother's house. And she had this long telephone cord that, she, you know, she was on the phone. And because my daughter started running, she took the phone cord and threw it down the hallway and hit my daughter in her back. My daughter was two. And I snapped. I, I was, I mean, I was shaking because, you know, when she had my daughter, it all came back to me of her beating on me. And I was like, you beat me and I will not let you beat my child. And um, I went to a neighbor's house. I stayed. I contacted my husband in Texas to let him know, you know, the trip is being cut short. You know, my mother tried to abuse our daughter. Um, I wasn't having that and until he got paid again, um, I couldn't come back to Texas. But in the meantime, my husband used Texas as a stomping ground to leave me at home with the two kids, um, buy us a little food. Um, and again, I just felt I'm in another situation. I'm being abused. Now, this time, my children are being abused. And um, once my son became four, I let him know I wanted a divorce. And by this time, he was going to Germany, and I was not going to go with him. And so I, I got there, and I had Met, the, met this guy that worked at finance and I told him about my situation with my husband and that I needed to leave him because of I'm going through mental abuse and I couldn't take it. I mean, when I say he wasn't giving me no money so I couldn't go anywhere. If the kids needed pampers, I had to call him and let him know. And sometimes he didn't come home at night. Um, again, I started I kept putting myself in a situation to, to be accepted and love. I kept putting myself in this situation when I knew good and well, you know, I didn't have to be in this situation no more, but I was scared to go out on a limb um, to say that I had dropped everything to be with this guy and find out this guy was just as crazy and raunchy. And, you know, I, one night I had just got the kids to sleep and he came home and took the pot. Now I had cooked dinner and put it in the refrigerator. He took the pots and pans and started beating them. Get your ass up, get your ass up, come down here and fix me a plate. And all it took was him to pull my hair one time. And I ran out the house. I went and got my kids. I ran out of the house, went to my neighbor's house and said, I cannot take it no more. He he pulled my hair tonight. He cusses me out. He calls me, bitch. Tell me that you can't go nowhere. You got these two kids and all this kind of stuff. And eventually I went to his commanding officer. And when I went to his commanding officer, they ordered him to move out of our homes. They told me he had to still pay the bills. He had to still give me money to go to the commissary. And at that time, I didn't know how to drive. I didn't know how to drive at all. So I had to deal with him and all together, he talked me into coming back. He wasn't gonna do it no more. He wasn't gonna be disrespectful. He wanted to be around his children. These was his only kids. So I stayed in a relationship and we was married for seven years. And that was seven years of torture because it wasn't like that I could go to work and make money and then leave. But do you know that um, I was talking to the guy at finance and I said that when my husband goes to Germany, I don't want to go. So he said, well, your husband was just in here and made an order to pick up your household goods, which was all our furniture to ship it to Germany. And then y'all would follow him. And I said, well, please just let him make the order, but change the order. I have no, I will not go out of country with him again. And so after my husband left for Germany, I 
got my household goods shipped to Virginia. I stayed with a friend with my two children and he did not want to give me money. So I went to the same army base that we met here in Virginia. And I told a commanding officer about everything that was going on and they made him make me an allotment. And this allotment in Virginia, and I knew to come back here because in New York, I wasn't close to a base, you know, in Harlem, the Bronx or nothing like that. I wasn't close to an actual military installation. So I went to Virginia where child support here is really high. And so I stayed here with my kids. He came back to the States. I told him I wanted to make up and I, you know, I told him when to come back, you know, like I would have the apartment. He started sending me extra more money to get the apartment. He was just going to do his time in Germany as a geographical bachelor. That means he was going to do 18 months over there and then come back, but he was going to come back and see the kids. Well, I had filed for divorce. And the week he came back was our court date. And he was served right in my apartment um, that he had to be in court. And we went there and I told the judge everything that he was doing, mentally abusing me, withholding money from me. And the, you know, the judge granted, you know, our divorce, you know, made him right there. Um figure out what I was going to get for child support, the BAQ for this area. Um, he had to pay that to me and I got a job and my friends kept my kids when I'm, I'm telling you, I worked a lot of jobs, you know, till I got the one corporate job that I wanted. I, I worked a lot of jobs to pull myself through. So I just, that was my third man. Okay. Then he was no good. And for a long time, I stayed alone. I just, in, our, in my house with my children, I had to get a two bedroom, even though I had a boy and a girl. Um, they slept with me no matter what. I made sure that I had a nice apartment in a nice area. Um, and all I could afford in that area was a two bedroom. It was off of shore drive here, which is really expensive to live here. But I knew that my kids would go to good schools, good daycares. I didn't have a problem going to social services where they paid my daycare. I got food stamps, even though I worked, um, I worked and I made sure that what the girl in college taught me was to always pay myself first. I sacrificed, um, I sacrificed a whole lot. I, I, every time, every, all, mostly all the clothes I wore was the uniform that I worked in, you know? And so I finally meet a Navy guy. Now here, y'all look at it. I'm falling in the same footsteps as my mom, military men, right? A guy with him, you know, I just couldn't take no more. I had to tell him everything I went through. Um, and I just told him I just couldn't be in another relationship that that would damage me. And he was like, oh, I would never do that to you. Um, I wouldn't. And we, and we end up being married seven years. Y'all know the seven years is the bad year itch. Something always happened during the seventh year. And it was good. It, I can tell you that it was good. Um, he upgraded my life. I was able to start working in my corporate job. But then he got orders to go to Japan. And so I, we moved to Japan for eight years. And I'm going to tell you, I got pregnant with my third child. And this guy was so sneaky and ruthless and I had my daughter and um, he was cheating on me the whole time because of his job it constituted him to be away and in a building where you couldn't call in that building because it had a lot of secrets in the building and um, so one night 
Um, you know, I could drive on the base without a license, just on the base. And the steering was on the steering wheel was on the passenger side over there. So at night, I would put my kids in the car seat and um, just drive around the base so that I could learn to drive. So I happened to drive over there um, where the secret building was, and um, his car wasn't there. And so all night long, you know, I'm calling him, I'm calling him. I say, well, Dave, he do take a break. So I happened to call a girl who um, her husband worked with my husband. And I said, yeah, my husband um, told me that uh, your husband and he was working all night tonight. He said, they don't work all night, girl. They don't work all night in there. Um, so I'm sitting there really... Um, feeling like, oh my God, I got three young children, um, you know, um, by myself, I'm being used again. And, um, but at this time I knew I couldn't come back to the States and just start all over with three kids. And I just feel like, um, and I can tell you what was some of the downfalls in my relationship, um, sex, um, I, I, it wasn't just sex. I just didn't want anybody to touch me. If y'all would understand that, I just didn't want to be touched a lot because of what I had went through um, with my mother beating on me. I just, I didn't, I could be on the train and I didn't, I would ride in between the cars of the train so people wouldn't touch me. And you know, I carried that for a long time and I wasn't in no type of therapy. I was just going through hell and just kept hitting myself in a wall with men that I was with. I just was taking the verbal abuse. I said it because of my kids. Um, I was taking like you not giving me money and I have a college education and was afraid to leave my children for a long period of time. So I would take jobs where I wasn't gone for a long period of time, something that wouldn't take me from nurturing my children because I wasn't nurtured. So he was cheating with a Japanese girl. Now, the plan was to take the daughter we had together and to be with her. And so working on that military base, he, no Japanese was supposed to um, fraternize. That mean, you know, be in a relationship with any of the service members. And uh, I threatened to, um, to report her and him. And my husband's commander was a woman. So we were invited to a dinner party at the commander's house. And I wasn't happy because he was like, come on, get dressed. I got a babysitter. I didn't you know. He really didn't want me to go. And I, and I just was always pressed to be a people pleaser, to please him, um, and it didn't work. So when we went to the um, the commander's house, uh, he just told me, I want you to stand over there and shut up, don't speak to people. Here again, I'm going through somebody screaming at me, shouting at me, not giving me the opportunity to be me. And, um, I, I was talking to his commander, did not know it was his commander because I had never met her because um, everybody was not in military rank clothes. And I just told her my husband is mistreating me and I just don't really want to be here. He screams at me, he leaves me at home with the kids. And I was just talking to somebody that, you know, made me feel soothing with her voice, comfortable, it had me relax. Um, in, in, in other countries, there's housekeepers who they're the ones that take your coat. They're the ones that offer you food. There's the, they're the ones that make you feel comfortable. So I, he didn't introduce me to his commander. I mean, he didn't introduce me to her. So, and then she said, oh yeah. And I said, and he's messing with somebody that works in the office with him. And she was like, Oh, it's going to be all right. Some of these guys come over here and do the most raunchiest things. Some of them just come overseas just to mess around. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm talking to this lady. She's introducing me to people. And then it's toasting time. 
and she gets up in the middle of the floor with her husband and said, in case people don't know me, I'm commander so-and-so. Oh my God, I done told on my husband. And you know, I didn't know what was gonna happen. I didn't know what was gonna happen to him, but she had another taste in her mouth for him after that. And so um, I had told her the bottom line, I, I wanna go home. But what she did was um, moved my husband out the next day into the barracks and restricted him to the barracks. And my husband was working through with me saying, please, I forgive me. Um, I will never treat you like that again. Um, you know, he just didn't wait till our tour in Japan was over because I could see that because I wasn't willing to have sex with him. Um, and after I found out he was not coming home, you know, he's out all night for date, you know, different days. I got duty this weekend. I got duty this weekend. Um, I knew that he had a relationship out there with somebody that, you know, that was his number one. Me and the kids were not his number one. And when it was time to come back to the States, you guys, he was getting stationed in Chicago to push boots. And it's near Chicago. I forget it. It begins with a W, but I knew that I wasn't going to go to Chicago, that my intent was to go. I was already getting child support for my first two kids. I went to Japan. I was doing, I was still in school, you know, taking classes to get my next degree. And I was going to wing it by myself. Um, I was going to wing it. I came back here. I bought me a starter home as a first time buyer. I used his credit, his power of attorney. And then once I got into the house, six months later, I refinanced that mug. He was pushing boots, not even knowing that his name wasn't on anything of mine's. And then guess what happens? So I figure, okay, he's telling me, I really miss you and the kids. We're going to make it. You know, I'm going to come home from pushing boots. It's, you know, being over here in Waukegan, I think that's the name of it. I wasn't going to have enough time to spend with you if you came to Chicago. So just stay in Virginia. I stayed and guess what? When my husband finished pushing them boots over there, he got stationed in Virginia, started an affair with a coworker that was enlisted and he was an officer and um, she got pregnant. And she tells me that she's pregnant by him and he intends on divorcing me and um, but he couldn't divorce me right away because, you know, he hadn't been here long enough. When he gave me the separation papers and asked me what I want, I stalled. I started talking to JAG lawyers and civilian lawyers before I was signed um, separation papers. I stayed with him. I let him do what he wanted. Um, he gave me, he was giving me the BAQ, which was what they give you to pay for housing. I was banking it. I was saving it. I had a safety deposit box. Uh, I mean, I'm going to tell you, we filed taxes together. And when the taxes came in the mail, I went and cashed the check. You guys, this is no lie. I went and cashed the check and threw away my ID, my driver's license, my military ID, my driver's license. And I kept the income taxes. I just put it away. And then I told him the only thing he can have is his clothes. Because remember, we've been overseas. I've been buying Japanese furniture over there. I just collect, start collecting rosewood furniture. And that's when it started getting nasty. Um, the girl, he's, he. I was driving, a, um, not an Escalade, because I drive that now, but I was driving another truck. Um, I forget what it's called. I think it was a Titan. Nah, let me see what it was. I can't, I can't remember what it was, but it was a luxury car. I was driving that and he took it away from me. 
and gave me the little Mustang, you know, because in the state of Virginia, if I wanted the money, it was either you had the money and the payment for that truck, you have to downsize it. And so um, downsized the money. And I said, okay, just give him the truck. They gave me the little Mustang. I was working my corporate job. Um, when we went to court, he was fighting. And then, y'all, he tells the judge in Virginia, I got another baby coming. I can't afford to give her that money. The judge made him give me $900 for alimony until I remarried and made him give me $2,300 child support for the one child that we had. So um, I didn't know this that my husband had bought a house for him and his new baby. And you, you cannot imagine when I found that out, I felt rejected. I didn't date for, I could say, three years. And... I had a friend that passed away, high school friend, went to his wake and I met my husband, the one I have now, but I dated him. Well, we talked on the phone for nine months before I would even go out on a date with him because I had my three children. I had to, I, you know, I had been in counseling by this time. I have been into, you know, when you're going for traumatic things, I was listening to a woman who said her husband raped her daughter. I could not allow a man to be around my children. I was just scared. Um, and that's my fifth man. And I, my husband now, um, we have been married 10 years. And then my husband, got into an accident at his job. Now, I'm going to tell you before I get to the accident, my husband, this man was the first man who ever showed patience with me because I told him everything I went to. That means if he was going to run away, he was going to run away with knowing all this stuff about me that I've lost two kids that, you know, I've been, I'm damaged. I, I needed him to know I'm damaged and I can't afford, this is my third marriage. I can't afford to get in something else that might fall down in a couple of years. When he asked me to marry him, it was, I, was, I wasn't in love, y'all. And honestly, I told him, I don't love you. I don't, I don't think that would be a good thing to do. He said, you will learn to love me. My husband married me anyway. I went through a bunch of trials and tribulation. I was on medicine. I was on Zoloft. I was on Clonopin. I was, you know, I used some to get up. I used some to lay down. Um, I started getting migraine headaches because of my own trauma that I went through. I was making myself sick thinking this is going to happen. This is going to happen. This is going to happen. I didn't get close to any other women um, as friends because, you know, I was afraid. I was afraid if I, you know, told them what I went through, people would talk about me, that I wouldn't be able to befriend somebody. Um, and like I said, um, with this husband, he told me to, you know, quit my job. And he told me this house that you're living in, it's too small. It was 2,300 square feet. He said, this is too small and I'm not gonna live in no house that you live with your ex-husband. And we used to drive around and drive around and he was he drove me to this neighborhood and I said, I like that house. And believe it or not, my, he started building the house that I said I like in another neighborhood and I didn't want to tell my husband, you know, I didn't want to really introduce him to my brothers and stuff like that. I wanted to wait till I knew that I felt compassion and love for him. But you know what? He said, I got enough love for the both of us. And he was a country boy. He had lost his mother. He was in foster care. And he told me, I want you to quit your job. And I was like, no, it takes two people. And then I got my three kids. I got to take care of them. I got to make sure they get everything you want. He said, listen, 
you don't make more than me in a whole year than I make in six months. So I got off on faith and I quit my job and I became a foster parent. And as me and my husband was taking those classes, I would hear some, you know, they would show us films of some, some scenarios that we might get into. Um, you know, and they would cut off the lights while we were watching these films. And a lot of things that the kids were saying, I went through that and I was crying and I just, ooh, I was crying in the dark. And one day I just broke down and said, oh, I don't think I could be a foster parent because I was triggered. I was reliving stuff. I was reliving some of the stuff that was happening to those kids and driving home from the class one night, I told my husband, I don't think I could do this. I need to go back to my job. He said, you can do this because this job is gonna help you get through your trauma faster. He said, when my mother died, I had to go into foster care, but it was kinship foster care. And every family that I went to didn't like, didn't like us and split us up, it was four of us and they split us all up and kept the boys with the boys and the girls got split up separately. And I used to get whippings and you know, I could only eat one time a day. So on our dates for the all, for these nine months, we was talking and I, I tried so bad to turn him away from me and it even made him love me more. So now in my life, um, and still in therapy, I learned to try to identify with people that are good for my spirit. And if I know that they're not good for my spirit, I got to keep them away. But I made a mistake and trusted a couple of people. Um, and they never did anything to me per se, but when I seen how they would treat other people and knew that that was not in my standards, I was able to just leave them. And I've always been the type of person that I can meet people and if they weren't good for me, not, not what they could do for me, but if I didn't see them being good to other people, um, I couldn't stay around. And sometimes my mouth gets me in trouble with the Department of Social Services because I'm an advocate. You know, it's crazy when you're standing next to somebody and they said, no, oh, that girl mama ain't do that. And then I talked to the child myself and said, you know, what can we do to make it better? And some of the things they say, like, all right, can I eat three times a day, at least breakfast, lunch and dinner stuff? And you know that what they're talking about is real because you've been through it. So now I'm back in Virginia, you guys, and my mother lives 10 miles down the street. And she doesn't come around much because I bring it up. I said, mom, do you want to talk about my childhood? She evades it and tells me it was an abuse. She was disciplining me. I'm the reason why she's successful, that I'm successful because of the way she disciplined me. But through my training and my therapy, y'all, it was abuse. So I get triggered when somebody's screaming and belittling somebody. I get triggered um, being in a big crowd sometimes. I do. I get triggered. Um, Sometimes being in a crowd, sometimes when I go to clubs, I make sure I get a VIP booth that has its own interest and own exit um, because I'm scared what might jump off in these clubs and stuff. And so I have been a person that I do. And some of the people that's up here that know me, I am the type of people that will block you from following me. If I feel like, you know, there's something bad about you that will cause me to be triggered, um, I will put you out of my life. And I'm still learning at 55 to hold on to somebody.
hold on to somebody. And I met a group, a, a group of ladies here that um, they hold on to me. And if they don't see me out and about or on, you know, doing anything, they will say, come on, ride with me here, go with me here, you know. And I've, I fell in love with these ladies and, you know, and talking to these ladies over cocktails, found out that some of them went through the same thing I've been through. And what they call it is the black sheep of the family. Um, but y'all, I keep praying. I keep believing. I keep trusting. I keep loving the children that God allowed me to have. I love this man that I'm married to because today um, I knew I was coming on here tonight and I wanted to get Dominique's paperwork where I lost her and um, so I could read off what exactly was going with her, on her medically. And, and I couldn't find it for the first time. I couldn't find it. And maybe it was saying I didn't need to go back and read that because God had to remind me that that is gone, but I gave you something else. And that is what your story is. And this is what your story is now. So y'all, I'm, I just want to tell you, cause I wasn't going to hold you long tonight. I was a victim, but I am victorious now. And because I've been through mental abuse, verbal abuse, you know, a little bit of physical, it wasn't a boom, 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 but it was like pulling my hair once that was enough, um, degrading me. Um, that I have overcome some of that. So when people say negative things about me, I do not allow it to fester in my body because like everybody gets talked about. And it, you got to be strong. You got to be strong enough to say, they don't know me. I can deal with that. I got to move forward and upward and not let them pull me down. And that's, I, I mean, I, I want to explain, like, when I was on that other page, I, I truly was joking. My stuff was comedic art. You know, like people sent me a lot of nasty messages in on my Instagram about Apple Watts. Go back and look. I wasn't there when about Apple Watts. I wasn't even there. I was on vacation. Monica did ask me to um, come on while I was on vacation, but I did not. So I don't know exactly what happened because I didn't go back and look. But what I'm telling y'all is... You got to move on. You got to keep. Are you buffering, Tina? Are y'all buffering? Please press one. If you are buffering, please press one. Are you buffering? I hope not. I hope y'all are not buffering. Oh, okay. So you have to trust in whatever is going to give you light. You got to trust in it. It might come in a form of another person, a girlfriend, a therapist, God. Um, you got to trust somebody and you got to start building yourself up. You got you can't stay here. And I'm telling you, in my generation, a lot of us got abused and they called it weapons. And all we can do is change. All we can do is change the narrative. Reach back in. We can't change from getting our ass whooped, getting choked. And I mean, I have burns on my body. We can't change that. All we can do is reach back in and talk to some young girl. And if she needs help, help her. Anybody who needs our help with abuse, um, help them. Because if we just, a lot of people that hit me up in my Instagram have buried a lot of things that happened to them, have buried the abuse, the verbal, mental, physical abuse. And I'm asking you today to not do that no more. I'm asking you, go outside, 
scream out in the universe. I will not let this bind me down anymore. And then you got a new mission when you wake up tomorrow. Your new mission is, I'm going to tell you how you can pay off your bills faster. If you got bad credit, that you know, tell you who you can go to and try to get some of your credit cleaned up. Um, I'm going to take from Buffy, crawl before you ball, because all of us, the e people who got money now, they crawled before they balled. Believe that. Doctors had to go through medical school, then save money and do everything. We cannot let the abuse just keep covering us. Will you have triggers? Absolutely. Yes, you will be triggered for the rest of your life. But we got to teach these young girls that we can't just let somebody love us, sex us up, and just leave us and leave a product of a new generational curse by having these babies from guys who really don't want to be with us. We got to stop getting pregnant from guys who don't want to be with us. We have to cry it out. We have to cry it out, and then we got to get up and do it all over again. And, you know, I like to apologize to you guys for crying on Saturday, but I had not talked about it in a long time. And I skipped over a lot because, you know, I don't want to tie y'all up on this good Monday night. But I want to be able to hear what y'all got to say. Um, I want y'all to know that I have been being for a very long time a giving person. I give myself and sometimes you got to sit back with your mouth closed and listen to what's going on around you to know that you can um, pick out people being abused. You can. If you can see the signs, even before they get harsh, you can see the signs. And um, if you can, you find a way to show that person, you know, if they're just telling them about your story, girl, I had a boyfriend like that. He used to do that to me. That was part of mental abuse, physical abuse, verbal abuse. You know, just bring up something about yourself to make something click in that person's head. And I do that all the time. Um, I do it all the time. So I just want to let y'all know, um, Never let someone take advantage of, of you. Get your strength, gather it, start reading. Maya Angelou was a good, good teacher for me by reading her content. Uh, I don't know if y'all heard of Evie McKinley. She got this um, song, um, Just Like God. And I do listen to a lot of her story and one of her songs says, I want to bring the whole hood with me. Um, and I listened to that song. So I have made it my mission to bring the whole hood with me to say, we're not kids no more. We need to, if we missed it in correcting our children, we need to reach back in and our grandchildren, we need to make sure that they're good people. If our grandchildren are being abused, we need to say something, do something. A lot of people don't want to report stuff because that's your child. But if you can't talk to your child to say, hey, 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 I don't like what you're doing. You need to do something to save that generation. Because my generation, the generation after me gets in a lot of trouble. They don't have respect. And sometimes... If they don't learn respect from us, they're going to learn it from jail and being abused. So I'd like to know if anybody want to get on and share something. I would really like to not talk about that panel over there and those people. Anything negative. I don't want anything negative. Um, that... Um, took a lot of, out of me to talk about what I've been through. Because after I shared with y'all on Saturdays, y'all, I went to bed. I was dreaming. I was dreaming of that stuff. I was shaking. My husband had to wake me up. Um, I want to know if anybody, Nisi, you want to drop a link for them? 
Y'all, I just want y'all to always help somebody. Reach back because we never know what somebody going through because of what they look like. I can look like a million dollars and y'all just wouldn't have never assumed that I was abused. Nisi, did you drop the link? Hit the like button. Let me see, Nisi, where are you? Did she drop the link already? Nisi? Okay, Nisi dropped the link. <laughs> <laughs> she just dropped it. So if anybody would like to come on and um, like I said, um, I know somebody asked me to write a book. Um, I am. Um, I have never thought about that, but I do plan on sharing. I'm going to go into um, childhood trauma and um, uh, a lot of things. I'm going to start talking about childhood trauma and how you can work your way out of it as an adult because it's something all righty i don't see nobody who has hit the link yes i saw the link two times okay i promise to choose to help someone yes y'all we got to reach back in and help our young folks um, thank you for sharing your story. I too rose from the victor, from victim to victoriously living and thriving in life. You are an inspiration and a truly courageous, resourceful woman. Yes, um, in your city, you guys, I will tell you where you can get help. Um, I will even come. I'm gonna add DJ to the screen. Hi, DJ. Hey, hey, Marcella, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, well, first of all, let me just say that I have been listening to you and I've kind of been following the whole breakdown or whatever the case may be, but I want you to know that you have truly, truly inspired me and, Thank um, you. and just sharing your story of transparency and being able to be open and honest and help so many people out there that are really hurting and knowing um, that there is a way that you can actually overcome this. You don't have to stay in the same condition that you're in. You have to make a choice and make a conscious decision to actually do something different. And that's what I heard in your story tonight is that you made a decision. You know what? I'm not going to continue to cycle and to keep cycling around life the same way that I, I've been cycling. And I'm going to do something different. So I wanted to let you know that that is very commendable of you. And to be able to still open up and share your experience with a whole lot of different people. But I just had one question I wanted to ask you yes. because this is something that really hits home for me. You know, I am a person who has suffered abuse, even at the hand of people who are, I know love me and, and I love them. But how do you, and I really want you to spend some time sharing this with people because how, how do you, learn to trust again when you have been in a situation where you have been abused and you put yourself through situations where you see the abuse could potentially happen and how, how do you just say to yourself you know, I'm, I'm going to try this again i'm going to try it again um with my mom i just i used to look at other people with their mothers i would be jealous so i would try to make it work with my mother but after a while of trying to buy her um and it didn't work my friends my girlfriends shared their moms with me um how i don't think i could ever trust my mother again my mother is living i don't think i could ever trust her again but it's one thing i will not do i will not disrespect her because you know the good book says if i dishonor her my days are going to be short on this earth so when she comes around when i cannot deal with her i will step off to another room or do something else or ride to the store while she's in my house um and as far as with a relationship um, with my husband, I'm married to now, I was very transparent and honest with him and told him that I really have never loved a man the way I love my children. And he was patient with me. 
But as long as you tell your partner up front that you have been through some traumas, don't let them go in thinking this might end up in marriage or end up in a in-depth relationship without telling them the traumas because you got to give them the opportunity to say, I want to stay and I want to work on it with you. And other than that, you're going to be in and out of relationships. You're not going to trust people. And it's just going to become terrible of you. You become the abuser and not even mm. knowing that you're mentally abusing somebody um, by not giving them what they want. For example, say a woman want to marry you and you know that that's not what you want to do and you stay with her a long time, then you have allowed her to waste away knowing from the beginning you didn't want to be there. You wasn't going to commit. Hmm. That's very interesting. You know, it's very interesting you say that um, because, you know, a lot of people out there, um, Marcella, they are really, really, there's a lot of hurting people out there a lot of hurting people. And I don't think that they really realize or recognize that they are a hurt person and they don't even recognize how they're, how that hurt interprets and how it hurts other people, you know? Right. And it's, and it's not like it's intentional. It's not like it's purposeful. It's just the fact that you've experienced something in your life that you've always known and this has become your belief system this is mm -hmm. what your wheels of training have been and now you have been you basically took what you've learned and you you you've transferred it to someone else and right. i think that a whole lot of people out there just need to really recognize you know what understand really come to grips within yourself what that hurt is inside of you and feel it just sit in that moment because until you can actually feel that hurt and stop masking it don't yeah. you know smoke it away don't drink it away don't um don't sex it away but until you can actually sit in that hurt and say you know what gosh you done took me there marcella <laughs> Yes, that's true. <laughs> Women sex it away. Women find other avenues to cover up that hurt. She will have sex with multiple men. She will drink it away. She will smoke it away. She will mistreat her kids. And guess what? She's still hurt at the end. And then guess what? Those are the women that some of them end up by themselves for the rest of their lives because our men are growing up uh, learning to identify hurt women and they will take what you give them and move on. That is so true. That is so true. And, you know, like for me, I've been, well, anyway, I'm not going to put my whole story out there, but, <laughs> you know, but, but thank you for sharing your story because it's helping so many, so many people so many more people out there. I was on another channel and I actually heard your um, your testimony about, you know, being there for your husband and when a tragic accident. That's oh, what yeah. love is. It's enduring. It's it's long suffering. It's it's being there. It's sacrificing. And right. to hear that you, you know, even though you weren't in love, you were willing to give it a chance and to find what love really is and searching out what really love really is. Marcella, kudos right. to you for Thank sharing you. tonight. And I want you to know, I love, I love your spirit. I really Thank do. You. I don't know what anybody has been saying about you as far as negative, because people can always, you know, I've learned this. People can develop a, I guess, a story about a person and really try to make it, seem like that's their story but until yeah. you tell your story yourself nobody will ever understand why you are where you are until you are able to share your story because nobody else yeah. has to share your story but you but anyway you're, right. Marcella, you're gonna hear from me more often well you can reach out to me on my instagram um marcella speaks and i'll talk to you uh, i'll you know give me your number and i'll call it i called some people today so I, I'm a woman of my word, and I really want to help change the narrative about mostly Afro-American people. We've been abused. Yes. And overcoming that abuse is even the message that you have shared on tonight. So kudos to right. you. Right. And thank, thank you for you. sharing. Thanks for having me. All right. Me. You're All welcome. Bye-bye. Right. Bye-bye. 
All right, does someone else would like to come on? Uh, you know what, you guys, that is great that a man could come on. That is so awesome that a man could come on and talk to us. And I didn't even tell you what happened to my husband. My husband lost his leg at an industrial accident and he died twice. And I thought I was, when he died twice, I thought I was losing the best thing I ever had in my life. And I stayed and I believe my husband is living and thriving because I loved him more than I ever loved him in my life because he loved me. So um, anybody want to log on? I just want to help y'all um, the best way I can. I need y'all to realize that even at your age now, things could be turned around. Um, we're going to be doing some stuff on, um, we're going to be doing some stuff, uh, you know, on the housewife show, giving me giving my opinion, and then I'm gonna go back to teaching. And if y'all want to um, do some things that um, you think I can help you in, now y'all, I am not a licensed therapist, so I'm not a licensed therapist. Um, even after asking people not to ask me for money, they did, but. Um, those are the people I did not respond to, some of them. And I just want to help all that I can, you guys. And like I said, I wasn't going to hold you up long. Um, it's not o'clock. And if anybody else want to come on, I want to continue this lesson of healing. We can help each other. We're not better than one another. We're the same. We are the same. Okay, guys. Um, we are the gems. Let's not forget that. G-E-M-S. And if y'all would like to talk to me um, in my inbox, go on my Instagram. If y'all would like to be a mod for this page, reach out to Auntie Nisi. Nisi, put your um, thing up. And you guys, just think about it. If uh, you got a Salvation Army in your area, you guys, uh, they need cups in all 50 states, really. They need cups to give homeless people cold water. Um, they look for paper products. Um, Y'all, it doesn't have to be money all the time. Uh, try to give your clothes that you can't wear. Don't take it to a thrift stop shop because they're going to sell it take it to a shelter where they could give people clothes that's coming in auntie nisi have put her um ramel is my moderator on my other page nisi so ramel reach out to nisi um della i see you i'm great to bring you on um i want y'all to help somebody it doesn't have to be money you guys it could be listening Hi, Della. Hi, can you hear me please? I can hear you. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, you know, I've been wanting to connect with you for a while. Now, the next slide tonight is what you have to do. Um, I really want to thank you from the deepest of my heart. Um, now you're going low. Going low? Maybe okay. Now I hear you good. Now I hear. Talk now, Della. Yeah, can, I think it's my microphone. Hold on. My Bluetooth. Let me. Look. Okay, now I can hear you great. Okay, yeah, it was the Bluetooth. It don't work okay. so great. Um, so I wanted to thank you so much for tonight. The lessons. At my age, I'm 43 and I just recently have two kids and I came from a very traumatic childhood with my mother and I had to learn that she that was passed on to her. Her hurt that she gave me was passed on to her and she never healed. So she passed that on to me and I had to make a lot of healing in myself 
so I don't pass it to my boys. Yes. Because and, and, and I'm I'm tearing up because this is so sensitive and delicate to our souls. We have a lot of pain from slavery, from our parents' abuse, our abuse, relative abuse, relationship, intimate abuse is just a lot. And then we go in society and we have societal abuse from other races and other groups of people. Yeah. We don't think about it, but now that we're trying to like pierce through it, it's a lot. I can't stop crying right now. I can't. You got to read. <laughs> you got to do exercise right in your house. And I'm, I'm, you got to do breathing techniques. We cannot change what has already happened to us, but we just got to make it better. And you have two sons and you need to raise them to be the best men that you, yes. can, teach them. you can teach them not to do what your mom did to her. You do not hit girls. You do not be disrespectful to women. It, you can do it. Yeah. Please, I, every time you feel frustrated, just breathe because you can't sweat the small stuff and you can't change everything. You can't. My mom beat me to the inches of my life. We talk about whooping. I could not walk. Yeah. Extension cord rippings. And yeah, threw me outside naked. I was 12 years old because of a thing that she had in her head, yeah. was mm -hmm. mental. And she couldn't believe that I wouldn't do what she's done or someone has done to her. It, it, I mean, it's crazy stuff. The things yeah. that, that we've been passed on. Merci, Sherry. And, and pray and thank God that you're not going to do it. You got to yeah. make sure that you don't. And that means spending some time with yourself. I know you want to be around your boys, but sometimes you got to get off work and just take a walk. Yeah. You got to have a, you know, do something with yourself. But the one thing I admire you and I don't know, I don't, I'm not there yet is the forgiveness for my mother. That's, that's the hardest thing. And I know to release myself, I say I do, but I haven't seen her in 15 years. So I just don't know. I don't know. Like I'm working on myself, but I guess the real test would be to see her physically. Yeah, that's going to be know that. Test. Sorry? That's going to be the test when you see her physically. I didn't talk to my mother a whole 10 years. And I was just very protective about my children. That's all. I did not keep my children from my grandmother, but I just didn't leave my mother with them. Mm. You gotta show your kids their, where they come from, their generation. I'm scared of that part. I know, but you just can't leave them. Are you in therapy, Della? I I was when I was pregnant because I knew I needed that help, but right now I'm not. Hey, you can do some online therapy. You don't even have to go. Okay. Yeah. Oh, but thank you for having me on. I don't want to keep you on your audience. Well, if you want to reach out to me, Della, just mm -hmm. inbox me and mm -hmm. someone speaks on Instagram. Mm -hmm. I will do that. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful mm -hmm. night. You thank too. you, everyone. Cheers. Okay, Miss Cece. Hi, Miss Cece. I can't hear you. You need to connect your microphone before you can add them. Okay. Take it out. Take okay. Now take it out of your computer. Okay, are you, can I hear you?
Oh no. Okay, she's gone. Um, CC, I couldn't hear her. You guys, um, forgiving them is not for them. It's for you. Once you forgive someone who has mentally or physically abused them, they won't understand. But you got to do that to get to the next obstacle. Um, you may not like everybody you encounter, but you have to deal with people and simply just be cordial and move on. Because if you stay stuck on that hate, oh my God, it's going to destroy you and not the next person. Like, like a caller from Saturday said, you know, it destroyed them and their mother walks around and she ain't even bothered. You have to do what you got to do to ease the load off of you. And um, not paid by Monique. Thank you for coming on. Um, make sure you're not on mute. Am I on mute? I'm not on mute, I don't think. Uh, let me see. Hit the like button, you guys. I see that up there. Let me see. Can I go back up and get some people's chat? Cause you um love you. I love you too. Della, hook up your device. I, I did talk to Della. Did I talk to Della? Uh, anybody else want to go live? Do y'all like that name, Gems? I don't want to keep y'all up here for a long time because I um yes, Tanya, I do have a cash app. Nisi, did you put that cash app up, please? Um, I'm glad I found your live. I watched Saturday and I cried. Thank you. I cried to you guys, even afterwards. Like I said, um, I never had verbalized, um, out loud to people about what I went through. I just would give advice and I would talk to my therapist and, um, okay. Oh, Miss uh, Diva put up my thing. But I want to thank everybody for the love, you guys. Team Gems, that's it. Y'all are my gems. And I'm going to help y'all get through this. I mean, things where you can relieve your stress that's simple and free. You know, in the night air, come out on your porch, your deck, by yourself. Get some air. Walk on the beach. Um, because, y'all, I ain't going to lie to y'all now. I still be getting stressed out. And sometimes I feel like, oh, my God, I just got to get away from people. And I do. Um, my husband will allow me to go to a hotel where I actually sleep in a dark room to get my bearings. I still get rattled sometimes. And sometimes I could be, I mean, what I, I didn't share with y'all um, through all that trauma I had, like in my 19s, 20s, and early 30s, I used to be a rough rider. I mean, be out in the club and slap somebody, you know, do crazy stuff, hit, fight. And then I just said, how am I going to do all this? How am I, I can't be like this. I, my life changed as you got, you get older and you start delving your life in positive things, you change. Uh, that sounds good. Some sleep. Hi. Uh, hi. Does Marcella have super chats enabled? I don't see the option. I don't have super chats yet, um, you guys. Um, I don't have it yet. Um, she's working on that. Um, and so when we get that busy, but really, yeah, I mean, believe me, really, I didn't care if I didn't have super chats. Um I for you know I just want to help people right now and when it comes it's gonna come when it needs to come. Um, like I said, if you want to send cash apps, I promise you every dime of a cash app will go towards getting cups, getting sanitizer, band aids for homeless people. Um, right now I'm in the summertime. That's when we get everything ready to prepare for the winter soups and like progressive progressive soups and I save money to um, put gas in vans to pick up people and bring them to the Methodist church right down here in my neighborhood where 
vendors who own restaurants around here make a five course meal for homeless people. We let them shower in the Methodist church. It's not even my church, it's a church that I just volunteer in. They shower, we put band-aids on scratches and stuff. We read the Bible to them and then um, they sleep overnight and then we take them right back out the next day to, and we, we work with the Salvation Army to say, we're gonna pick up the homeless people tonight and we're gonna bring them to the church where they can bathe, get haircuts, barbers, cut their hair free. And we just um, help with the cleaning staff that come in and clean behind them. And like I said, um, I am not a certified therapist, um, but like I said, I needed medicine to help control my anxiety. And sometimes I still have anxiety and I weeded myself off my medication. Um, sometimes I do need a Xanax or a Valium and I'm not ashamed. So that's why I can't be an alcoholic because I take medicine sometimes. Um, so my um, cash app is Marcy, M-A-R-C-Y D-A-V. Um, you are a survivor. I'm more than a survivor. I am a, I'm victorious now and like I said, I still get triggered. I don't want y'all to ever think that that went away and I'm magically poof, I'm healed. No, it's every day. I'm working on it every day, not to be in fear. Every day. Um, worthy cause, sounds good. Marcella, blessings will pour onto you. Keep up the good work. And it does, you guys. I get blessed all the time. And I always turn around and bless someone else. Okay, guys, I love you guys, 233 people watching tonight. I'm glad. I know it's a work night. Um, if anybody else want to sign on, I am going to sign off. And Wednesday, I will be coming up here, and we will talk about going through divorce. Remember, I had two divorces. I'm going to be helping people talking about divorce and how it can be easier, what you need to do, what you can do for free, what you can do being paid for. Um, please write a book. I, I know I need to write a book, but I need to find somebody who's willing to ghostwrite. I'm not a good punctuator. Um, I could just tell my story and that's it. Thank you, D. I'll be looking to hear from you. Um, thanks for sharing your blessings. Gems, y'all are my gems. I love you guys. Please support good people here. And um, I thank you. Good night. Uh-oh. Watch D. What's that? Oh, let me see. Who is this? Watch Hi, D. Marcella. Hi. I think I'm watching the playback. So I don't know if you're ending now. So I wasn't that far ahead. I just got into where you said, and you want to call in? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, I didn't know if you were done. I just want to say, Marcella, I really appreciate you sharing your story. It really touched my heart. You had me here crying. Thank you. It really touched my heart. I go through it with my mom as well. And it's just an ongoing thing. And I mean, to the to the life of me, I cannot understand why this woman don't like me. I mean, the only thing I can think of is started from the womb. Like we just never had that connection. And it's maybe, just like, maybe you know, it's your father. That's where I think it comes from. I think the hatred or however she felt for my dad and the fact that you're carrying his child and then yeah, I, you know, I was her first daughter, and it's just it's it's something that really hurts. But it's like I gotta just I don't know what to do. She don't want to do counseling. Just like your mom said, my mom says the same thing. She'll always, her first thing is, you think I'm a bad mom. You think I'm a bad mom. I'm do like, you live with I her? I don't. I don't live with her. Honey, no. for a couple of months, maybe you need to not even speak. Let, her come, let her come to you. We've and done that multiple times. And Do you let her come to you? Yeah. And I think that's my downfall because I'm so like, you know, I want, no matter how old I want that relationship, we've never had it. Yeah, and that's true. Really you want it. Me. Yeah. She disappoints me every time. Then I feel like a fool. Like, oh, why I do this? Why I let her get me upset? 
you know, like the last time really hurt me because we were on the, the best terms in my life. And boom, she just throws a curveball and it just broke me down. I was like, man, we got to a I've good been there. point. And it's like now I just threw my hands up, you know? Yeah, but please, please, please don't. What what you're going through with your mom, don't let it turn out to be you ending up in a bad relationship and repeating the cycle. Get you some help, please. If you have to call someone to talk to you um, and show you ways to maneuver through it and don't just say, I throw my hands up and I'm not going to deal with it. You got to learn how to move, maneuver through it. Okay. To make it better for you. If not, you're going to start getting some bad inserts happening to you that'll come from men, your kids, your friends, and you don't want that. I feel it. I feel it now. You know, I mean, I'm just hit 30, so I feel it. You know, I'm like, what is it when I look at my relationship with like girlfriends and things like that, all of that. And I think sometimes um, I look for my girlfriends to fill that void, like that closeness, you know, and when they yeah. don't disappoint me. And it's like, right. So yeah, please so talk to, I mean, you can hit me in my uh, Instagram inbox and I'll try to sh share with you some of the things that my therapist um, told, you know, told me and how I did it. And, and it'll be absolutely free and confidential. Okay. I, I really appreciate that. I mean, I mean, it shocked me to, you know, hear, I know other people go through it, but I was just like, wow, like, is it just me? Like this woman, like, it, it just, I really appreciate you sharing your story. I really do. Thank you. All right. It's going to get better. Go. It's going to get better, I promise. Thank you. I really, I pray it does. And I really believe it does, you know, because I feel like deep down inside, like, I know you love me, you know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. your daughter, you know, but it's just this moment right here. Yeah. It's going to get better. Be, yeah. I we don't want to be. We didn't get good, good until I was 45. Wow. Wow. That, that kind of makes me feel like, okay, I'm not tripping because I just felt like every year I'm getting older. She don't see, she don't see. And I don't have any children and I suffer and I, I don't suffer, but I just feel like I, I want to fix that. I don't want to bring that on to my children. They don't deserve that. I want to break right. that. You know, mm -hmm. because I'm to the point, I don't want to bring them around her, you know, and this is like, I don't even want that. What I about really your relationships with men? How are that? How is that? I'm, I don't. I don't even date. I honestly don't. I haven't dated him like seriously in probably about six years. Well, you got to find a companion, somebody that, you know, you think that he will be willing to take this run with you because believe it or not, you got some things going on because your mom was damaged. You are damaged and not sure why the woman who had you carried you for nine months don't love you. Trust me. I went through that. And I finally found the love of my life at 40. Wow. That's a blessing. And I'm really happy. That's a blessing. And that's something to really look up to because I just, I shut it down. Like even people ask me, I'm like, I don't date. I don't have time. I just make excuses or whatever, whatever. I can take care of myself. I'm not like, and yeah. I don't know if it's I'm scared or, you know, because people look You're at me scared. like, wow. You're scared and you're embarrassed about how they'll feel because you and your mom don't get along. Absolutely. Any man I've ever dated, um, they don't know about my mom. They right. don't know. They don't meet her. They don't know. I keep that completely. But you know, they wonder where's her family? Where's her parents? Yeah. Yeah, they do. They do. You know, they do. And I mean, it's just something I'm not ready for. I just feel like I can't, you know, and in the past, my friendships and things like that, she was very violent to them. And it's like, yeah. I don't want to, you know, somebody I might really, you know, like, and then you violent, you know, I don't know. Yeah. You know? So, it's going to work out for you. Please, um, in Instagram, would you be watch D? Yes. Yes. Okay. I will be looking out for it. Okay. Thank you so much. And let you me have a good night. You too. All right. Bye bye. Oh. RP lover. Hello. Well, wait a minute. Let me see. Hello. Hey, Marcella. How you doing? How are you? Good. I just want to, you know, come by and say that I really appreciate your story. It's uh, such a beautiful um, story. Like, you know, you're such a 
beautiful lotus flower, how you were able to overcome all that adversity and still be the woman you are today. I'm a Leo, you're a Leo, so we're strong people. But, yeah. you know, just you saying about giving to the Salvation Army and things like that, that's just so helpful. I didn't know they accepted um, soups and stuff now. So I'm going to actually um, go grocery shopping and get $100 worth of soup to donate oh, in yeah. your name tomorrow, to donate in your name for doing that, because I didn't even know that. And that's the Salvation Army thrift store. I'm talking about the actual um, the actual place where they go and stay and sleep yes. at night. Mm -hmm. yeah, yes, I'm going to go get some soups. The shelter. And, yes, ma'am, I'm going to get the soups and go ahead and take that to the shelter. But I just want to stop you. in and say, you know, I'm so glad I caught both lives. I didn't call in on Saturday, but, you know, I definitely watched it and, it's amazing to see how you have overcome all of the adversity you're making. And thank we love you. you. Yeah, and thank I love, you. Too. And I and love you're that like I'm a Yes, yeah, I was just going to say that I love being a gym. Okay. <laughs> have yeah. a blessed night. You too. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay, we're going to wrap it up, you guys. Please, um, Wednesday, be a new lesson and we're going to help each other. We're going to build together and y'all are going to be the gems and I'm going to be your gems. Good night, you guys. <laughs>